Hello and welcome to Really Dicey. Uh, today we have a special guest and a special topic. Uh, Manny, why don't you tell us what we've got? We're going to talk about D&D comics, Dungeons & Dragons comics that we enjoy so much, and maybe some other fantasy stuff related to it as well. But before we get into that, and oh, but, oh I'm sorry, Scott. We have a special guest today <laughs> that I forgot to introduce because I'm I'm an amateur. Um, uh, Scott, would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, you're muted. Oops. We're all amateurs here. My name is yeah. Scott Harris King. Amateur and, hour. Um, <laughs> I'm a writer and I make comics. Uh, and I started playing Dungeons and Dragons in 1980. And as we'll talk about here, uh, Dungeons and Dragons in a strange way was actually one of the avenues that got me into comics to begin with. Uh, and it's all come full circle. I'm currently, um, I've just started my Kickstarter for my new comic quest, which is a D and D inspired epic fantasy series, uh, all about, uh, you know, a party of adventurers thrown together by fate who have to, uh, go on an impossible quest to save their, their world from certain doom, you know, the good stuff classic all right <laughs> yeah all right now, now your, your project also has a uh, an adventure you to play along with as well at the end right that's right so we have um you know you can get the regular edition which is is just the comic book but one of the editions we have is what i'm calling the the tabletop rpg edition that has a special variant cover that i've done um it's an homage to the art of errol otis uh, classic D and D artists, specifically homaging the cover of uh, the Lost Caverns of Sojanth, and uh, so I've done the cover to look just like an old school D and D module. And Matthew here has helped me um, create uh, basically several pages, bonus pages that are just in that edition of RPG material that will allow you to play basically the story from the comic in your own home game. So we've got the rules for how paladins work um, because the main character in quest is paladin, how it works in, in the world of quest. Uh, we have the stat lines for, and uh, for the monster. So we've got like a monster's manual entry for the monster that they fight at the end of the issue. And then we've got a map and a little mini adventure that Matt's come up with. Um, so you can play through the locale uh, and some of the plot points from the story. And so it's got everything you need there. Um, and so far like that, you know, this is my 10th Kickstarter. Um, so I've, I've done a number of comics in the past. Um, and I always do a bunch of variant covers, you know, uh, this is the first time I've ever had a comic where one of the variant covers is selling more copies than the regular cover. Um, it is more expensive than the regular one, uh, in part because it has all the bonus pages. So it's gonna it's gonna cost more to put together. But uh, I've sold, even though it's more expensive than the regular version, I've sold a lot more copies actually of of the version with the game stuff in it. So it seems to be um, really resonating with with the uh, you know tabletop gamers, which you know which I'm really happy for. Uh, yeah. Because you know it, the comic is basically my love letter to you know D and D and all the great D and D games that I have had over the years. Cool. And we'll put a link in the description below. Definitely check it out. It's uh, I love the art. I love the art that you picked uh, for your covers. Um, they they really they're, they're really amazing. I love how you, there's like different variations. There's so many uh, choices one can pick. Yeah, I mean, I love doing different covers. Um, you know, variant covers within comics that sometimes can come off as kind of a gimmick. For me, uh, I like to have all the different covers because I just enjoy the variety. And uh, as a comic collector myself, a lot of times I do covers just because I want them for myself. Uh, so like today, um, I just added a new variant cover that looks like one of the endless quests pick a path to adventure books oh, I love um that. <laughs> and uh that was purely because i wanted it for myself <laughs> I, hadn't, I hadn't actually been planning on doing that but uh like i was relaxing last weekend and i was like huh what if i did the logo here and i basically just did the whole thing uh just for fun and i was like you know what i want to have this for myself 
and p- people that seem to like it had a, you know some even though it's only been available for a couple hours there's already been multiple people that have picked it up so um yeah i i really love doing those those covers and those homages to all the stuff that i loved as a kid great great so you said this was your love letter to your D games which is great i was in a lot of those games so good yes. stuff <laughs> so um what specifically um were your inspirations for this uh you know i'm not asking for old game stories but i mean that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, like just in terms of of what readers will see when they're reading it is, um, you know, there's going to be a party of adventurers uh, and there are different classes. And if you read the comic, um, you know, I'm going to try and get out, uh, put it on a regular schedule every three or four months. So hopefully at least three issues a year. And as the story progresses, you're going to see the characters level up. It's not going to be explicitly stated that they've leveled up. (laughs) <laughs> but you're going to see them, you know, get stronger. They'll be fighting more powerful, you know, enemies. But you're also going to see them getting new equipment, getting, you know, their look is going to change uh, as they get new stuff. So, you know, I think by issue four, the main character's look is going to be different than it is at issue one. Um, okay. And then by the time we get to the the end of this first big arc in issue 12, um you know, our characters are going to have all sorts of, you know, they're going to be much higher level. And uh, so I think, I think people will enjoy that, Um, you know, uh, but in terms of like, you know, the comics, sort of my inspiration, um, there's a long history of, of comics that are sort of based on D and D or referencing D and D and stuff like that. I I mentioned at the beginning, like, um, that D and D in a strange way is one of my sort of gateways into comic books. And that's because I started playing D and D in 1980 and by 1982, when those endless quest books came out, you know, I was playing a lot of D and D some, a lot of times by myself, <laughs> uh, you know, I just run myself through the modules. Um, but I was reading all of those books and I started reading dragon magazine and dragon magazine back then used to have ongoing comic strips in the back of the issue that would continue from issue to issue. It's where like the earliest D and D inspired comics were in dragon magazine. And I remember in the early eighties reading, um, a snarf quest. Snarf. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Larry Elmore, um, Mm -hmm. did Mm -hmm. snarf quest and uh, that started in 83. And, you know, I didn't start reading, buying comic books until 84. And and I'm sure that I had some of those Dragon magazines and was reading those comics and sort of, you know, getting into how the comics worked. This is my favorite part of the issue. (laughs) Um, And so then I, then I started, you know, started buying the comics. Um, So, yeah, in, in an odd way, the Dragon magazine and Dungeons and Dragons is sort of one of the things that sort of brought me into the the comic book world uh to begin with cool cool all right so oh go ahead go ahead sorry well i i'm very curious to hear about your take on like the dnd comics of old especially the ones that um dc put out for a few years because i remember when i was young i was actually not a fan of it not not because the stories were bad or the art was bad but i I don't know Act back then, I was a really stickler about canon and continuity, and I, like like the Dragonlance comic books that came out in DC. I, I saw them come out, and I'm like, all right, how much is is this? Did did did, did um did the writers that created Dragonlance were behind this? Do they know of this? Is this going in a very different direction? And I feel kind of uh, bad about that. Like now, I wish I could go back and actually look for a collection because now I'm interested. Now, now I'm kind of more open minded about it. Um, so, so yeah, so like what were the stories so, when you read them? What what stories exactly pulled you in into it? Yeah, well, you know, I've got some comics here I can show, but to speak specifically to your question, um, one thing that I think is a challenge, there have been a lot of D&D inspired comics over the years. And mm-hmm. in general, I actually prefer those to the official D&D comics. And the reason is this is just my theory, but this is what it is for me is that if it's an official Dungeons and Dragons comic, I'm usually disappointed because 
it's not my Dungeons and Dragons, you know, <laughs> like, sure, sure. I, you know, because I play Dungeons and Dragons, I've got my characters, we've got our games that we've played through. When you get something that's an official D&D thing and you're reading about other people's characters and other people's adventures, it it uh, it was hard for me to get into those. It didn't resonate with me because it was kind of like, you know, and maybe this is just a hang up for me, but it was almost like they were telling me how this the story was supposed to go. Like, here's how here's what the people at TSR think the adventure should be and mm -hmm. it was never what our adventures were and so i couldn't get into it because it because i was like well you do your characters and let me just do my characters sure. whereas the the comics that were just inspired by DD &D because they weren't official i didn't have that problem with them you know it was you know it was sort of like they were in the same boat as as we are you know, okay. and so as a result, I didn't really read a lot of those, um, you know, uh, growing up uh, for religious reasons, I was, oh, wow, that cat was, a, <laughs> was a, absolutely immense. Um, <laughs> My display uh, I wasn't allowed to watch the cartoons. So like, I know there's a lot of nostalgia for the, for the D and D cartoon, the 80s. I never got to see that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, by the time the official comics started coming out, um, I had kind of soured on their, like what their official stories were. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember getting, buying the Greyhawk uh, box set when it came out, whatever year that was, 84, or three or something. And being so confused because there was no, <laughs> there was, there was no module. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the setting, right? Yeah. And yeah. um, you know, I remember reading the Dragonlance books and I liked them. But again, it was kind of like, okay, but that's not how the paladins work in my game. Like that's not <laughs> how the that's not how that's not how the elves work in my game. Like, you know, so I don't know. Yeah, that might yeah. just be a hang up with me, but because of that, I never really got into any of the official any of the official stuff somewhere I, I couldn't find it. I was going to show it here, but somewhere I have like a, um, Oh, I just blanked on what it's called. Uh, Oh, uh, I have a spell jammer comic book somewhere oh. Oh, uh, wow. that I was going to yeah. show as an example of the official comics. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, hopefully that answered your question. Oh, um, it is. And, and, I, and I think in a way where we're like similar wavelengths, so so I'm I'm curious. So what what did inspire you? What what did you find um uh fun when it comes to comic books and, and fantasy? Well, um let me show you a few comics here just to get a little bit about sort of the history of like D D and comics. A comic that I think is really interesting is is this it's Warlord number 35. This is the earliest sort of mainstream reference to D&D that I've seen in comics. I'm not saying there aren't earlier ones. This came out in uh, the beginning of 1980. And basically what happens here is that the main character finds himself um, like teleported into a weird world and he can't figure out why he's there. And then other like warriors start showing up and he finds himself in these weird battles. He doesn't know why he's doing things. Uh, it's like someone's pulling the strings and you eventually find out that some of the wizards that had appeared in previous issues are playing Dungeons and Dragons and he's one of the characters. <laughs> and so as the story goes along, he'll, he, he like tries to do something and you'll see some dice like roll onto the panel and voices will come out and then like something crazy will happen and he'll be like, what's that? What just happened? Why did, why did I just do that? that didn't, I like this, or where did that thing come from? And it's because he, it turns out that he's a, he's a play, he's being played by these people in their own home game. Oh goodness. Uh, <laughs> this was clearly like, and the tone of this is completely at odds with everything else that happens in this entire series. <laughs> Warlord is like a deadly serious epic fantasy story that's like where the main character like he at this point he was on this sort of trying to find himself because it's a long story but he had accidentally killed his own son in combat and so um he uh 
you know, is going out and throwing himself into these crazy adventures to sort of, you know, with a death wish to get over the trauma. And then this issue happens in the middle of it. And then it goes right back to the way it was before. So it's clearly something where, you know, Mike Growl, the people working on the comics had discovered D and D and they loved it so much. They decided to put it in here because it doesn't make any sense in terms of the actual comic. Um, but in the eighties, you know, there was, in comics, there was this big indie boom, uh, yeah. you know, where um, the independent comics suddenly became really big and everybody was publishing their own comics. And there were like tons of D&D inspired comics. Some are directly, like obviously inspired by D&D. The most famous one is probably this. It's The Adventurers. <laughs> Very subtle. <laughs> yeah. And The Adventurers is just, it's just straight up, you know, a D&D party going through a dungeon, stuff like that. Like it's, it's exactly what you think it is. Wait, uh, how, how, how old is that? This came out in, uh, let me see. Uh, well, this, there's no, I mean, hold on. Um, it doesn't say, but I think it was 80, might have been 86. Wow, I remember those books. I, I just I think, forgot about them so long. Yeah, I think <laughs> it was 86. And around that same time, now, Adventures is a comic that I never actually saw at the time, but it was famous because. Uh, the first issue had a, had a, a very early variant where supposedly there was someone naked on the cover. So they changed the cover. So, was, so they put out two versions of it. And when you would read through comics and they had advertisements from comic stores with back issues, adventures. Number one was always some crazy, like $15 because, because there was the nude variant everyone was trying to get. So I never <laughs> actually saw adventures, but one that I did see was this here. The Dungeoneers. Okay, okay. And this is a straight up D and D parody. Like, it's it's an adventuring party, and they're in a dungeon, mm -hmm. and it's just all played for laughs. Like the whole thing, and it's all it's clearly like gamers wrote it. About, you know, based on you know goofy things that had happened in in their home game. This again is 1986, and this is a comic. This isn't the one I had when I was a kid, but I had this issue you know, at the time in 86. Um, so there was, there's quite a few of these. And then there were um, other ones that were slightly, well, actually this is another one. That's just a, like a blatant D and D thing. It's called dark regions. Okay. And when you read it, like the, the, the story in the first issue is the party meeting at a bar. It's the classic, like the party is, right? meets at a tavern to go out on an adventure and all this stuff. And this is from it's cover it's dated in February 87 but it probably came out in 86 like these other ones did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um I'm just, sorry I just have quite a few of these Empire Lanes <laughs> is is one from the okay. same period where there's a bunch of people in the fantasy world that are clearly like you know there's there's the with different classes the warrior the thief you know there's the dwarf the the wizard and what happens is this is 1989 uh, they get sucked through a portal into our world and end up living in a bowling alley in Chicago. Uh, <laughs> but like, um, you know, some of their enemies also came through the portal. So they're having these like fights with, you know, lizard men in the sewers under Chicago and stuff like that. And they're basically continuing their fantasy adventures from the other world, but it's in our world. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, twist. I like that. Uh, and here's another one from the eighties. Cause the eighties were like the big, like boom for, for this barbaric tales. Okay. Ooh. All right. Um, and you can see our, our three heroes here with their oh, armor. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. Skulls so knees and everything. Yeah. So, you know, the eighties were a big, a big boom time. And then, you know, you didn't see quite as much of it, I think, for a while. Like, the, I don't remember a lot in the 90s other than some of the official stuff that was D&D &D inspired. But it's definitely, you know, with D&D &D and, and RP, tabletop RPGs being kind of on the upswing, the, like the last 10 years or so, you know, particularly since Stranger Things, it feels like there's lots okay. of D&D &D comics. There's the yep. official line of comics, but then there's also like... You know, it, it seems like there's a lot of, of people that are that are doing inspired stuff. Um, 
one of the big ones was that was very popular for a while is called Rat Queens. Okay, yeah, I've read Wet Queens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, you have the, the the party is there's the warrior, there's the 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 magic user, the thief, and the cleric. Right. And uh you meet in the first issue other parties because there's several adventuring parties. This is they're just one of them. And they eventually put out uh, like an official Rat Queens role playing supplement, so you could play the characters and stuff. I did yeah, know that. and uh, so like they they've very much sort of played up that connection. And what I've seen recently is even comics that aren't, you know, really D and D related are still sort of thing. A comic that I really like is called Miskatonic High. Okay, which is uh, you know <laughs> the kids going to the high school next to Miskatonic University. Uh, sure. So it's sort of like it's like a high school. You know, it's it's kind of like a Scooby Doo sort of thing, except okay. for sometimes the characters get possessed by you know eldritch monsters and get killed. Um, but you can see on this cover they're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. In the comic, um, and they you know as you can see they don't realize that one of the monsters is real and it's about to smash through the window and eat them oh, all. No. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's just like there's a there's a long legacy of. Dungeons and Dragons, not just the official comics, but inspiring a lot of people in how they're doing these stories. Um, and yeah, this, this is definitely kind of a boom right now uh, yeah. in, in, yeah. in this sort of thing, which is great. Yeah. It's good to see. Have you read um, Die? Are you familiar with Die? I think I've heard of it, but I have not read it, no. Okay, yeah, it is... Um... Uh, I've I've read a couple issues, not the whole thing, but it is uh, it's really intense. It's it's about these these guys who get you know they get trapped in a fantasy world and then they escape and then and then they've got to go back. Right? Fairly fairly kind of typical, but it really leans into the horror of what that experience would actually be like. <laughs> um, and it does a really fantastic job of capturing the different kind of players um, and really looking at the uh, the psychological impact of getting sucked in the role playing game so it's 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 pretty it's pretty intense it's it's not it's it's not kind of a certainly not a fun romp in a magical world well, it's interesting you mention that because that is like a sort of a subgenre that I yeah. that I didn't mention is these stories where the players get pulled into their games. Yeah. When I was yeah. a kid, it wasn't a comic, but there was a book series, and I'm just blanking on what the writer's name was, Joel Green, something or other. Um that I at the time I read, and that was basically the story is turned out that the DM and their game was a powerful wizard from another, another dimension and when they play the game they all get sucked into the they all get sucked in the other world and and they're in, trapped in their characters um they yes. are there and and they're basically there's part where you know their characters the way they played them have different personalities than their own personalities and mm -hmm. so there's like yeah, two yeah. two different personalities trapped in the body and they have to like fight to to see who's going to take over um and you know so That's but dream. as a as a dm uh, i want to summon the eldritch <laughs> suck my players into my game and trap them there forever under my control um but you know it doesn't like uh <laughs> you know th there's actually a, another comic on kickstarter right now that i just did some cross promotion with for quest called uh, dungeons and dimwits and <laughs> it's the same basic idea but it's played for laughs. Like the players sure, get yeah, sucked yeah, into yeah. the game and now they're, they are their characters in the game, but with their own minds. And so they're like running around, um, you know, panicking because monsters are attacking them and they're like, you know, just people. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're discovering as they do this, like that the rules of the world they're in are still based on their game. So like oh, no. they have, they have abilities that they didn't, like they don't know what how they work but suddenly they're able to do something just because that's their class even well, though they don't well. actually like and it's all it's all played for humor so um yeah there's a lot of different ways that, that you can do it um mm -hmm. you know with quest 
uh, I'm treating it dead serious. Right. Um, I, uh, that's just how I like my epic fantasy. Um, yeah. and, uh, for me yeah. personally, when epic fantasy gets a little tongue in cheek, um, or too humorous, um, it, uh, it just loses the, it loses the, like, I, even when it's something like we're in on the joke, to, we're in on the joke together. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I'm kind of like, well, it's not a joke. Mm. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I shouldn't be making fun of my fantasy. So, so anyway, <laughs> it's just like, you know, some of that's fine, but um, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm with quests, like it's, it's, uh, it's very, very straight. And we'll see, like um, the other thing is like, I'm playing when I'm writing the characters, I'm thinking of it like a D and D game. And it's definitely a hardcore game. So like, you know, awesome. there, the part, there's a big party at the beginning of the first issue and there's a small party still alive at the end of the first issue. Excellent. Um, so Excellent. it's one of these games, like I think of it in terms of whoever's playing quest, they're going to need to reroll their characters and probably more than once. So nobody, you know, in writing terms, nobody's got plot immunity in quest. So characters that are main characters, you know, they, they may or may not survive um, just because their main character doesn't mean that they're going to make it to the end of the quest, you know. Yeah, that's um, how the game's played, or that's how I want to play the game. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's you know, it's um it's definitely a, a more hardcore, old school sort of sort of story. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Actually, if you want to pause the video here, right, there's one comic book I want to grab. So I know we got to wrap up soon, but I wanted to show you one of the one of the gems of my collection. I don't have a lot of comic books. I have a lot of DD books, but one of the gems of my collection is a copy <laughs> of Dark Dungeons. <laughs> and I'm sure Jack Trick would uh, Chick would hate me calling a comic book, but this is the classic story of Debbie and how she uses D D to join an actual cult and cast spells on her father. <laughs> Black Leaf dies. No, not Black Leaf. What? You could teach you to cast spells? I'm you know, I was so disappointed when I read this. I said, What? I've been playing for years. No one's taught me how to cast a spell. How do I cast actual spells? <laughs> I'm glad you brought that out. I do, I do have a copy of that as well, though mine's in Spanish for some reason. <laughs> 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 You, you know, someone online did a mystery science theater version of this. Nice. So, so it's, it's it's the pages uh, and uh, the, the robots sitting down at the bottom, like the show, and they're talking about it. And they point out the fact that um, uh, one of the characters, I think it's Debbie's character, starts off as a, a cleric and then is referred to as a wizard. Yeah, and I think robot says, no, no, she's a wizard named cleric. Right. <laughs> 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 uh, anyway, uh, that's all the time we've got. But uh, this has been a blast. Uh, well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of great uh, D and D comics, and there's a lot of great fantasy comics, and now there's one more. So go check out Quest. Yep, and the link and, below. Uh, It'll be in the description. Yep. Yeah, and again, you know, if you're a fan of of role-playing games which i assume you are if you're watching this uh <laughs> and you're a fan of really dicey uh matt here has helped me with the the adventure so if you get that uh tabletop rpg edition you can play through through that game uh and play through the story uh of the comic excellent all right like and subscribe and we'll see you next time all right take care everyone